guys, it's your girl Jessie Q and welcome back to another video on my channel. So, today's video is something that I'm excited about and if you've been following me on Instagram, by the way, at jessieq.co, you need to be following me. If you've been following me on Instagram and you watch my Instagram stories, you would have seen a few days ago that I uploaded some new things to my kitchen counters. I decided that I was going to do some marble contact paper on my kitchen counters and guys I was excited from the time that I was in the store to when I got home to when I did it to when I finished it because it was so awesome and I'm so happy with how everything turned out so I was shopping at this new store in Aranguez uh, close to the highway actually called CVS Hash and Carry and it is a wholesale and retail variety store and it's really nice and it's, it has a lot of things and I went and was just walking around and I found marble contact paper now I've been looking for this in Trinidad for so long and have not been able to find it so I was so excited when I did I found it there and I bought three rolls of marble contact paper from CVS and I decided that I was going to do my kitchen counters guys it took a while Took some time but it came out so awesome and I'm so excited to show you guys before we get into it I paid $13 for one roll I think that's pretty good and I used three rolls to do my entire kitchen and it came out well as I said so before we get into this video please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and also hit the bell icon so that you can be notified every single time that I post and without further ado let's get straight into the video all right guys so the first thing i'm starting off with here is just getting my spirits up because it's going to be a long night i'm doing this after whatever time in the night so i'm just doing a little jig to you know encourage myself what i'm going to use here is some glass cleaner you can choose to use disinfectant or whatever to wipe down your surfaces and make sure it's really clean not just from particles but also from dust and that will help your contact paper to sit, stick down better. So what I'm going to do is start lining it up where I want it to be. And the reason why I'm keeping the glass cleaner is because you can also use this for another method. And I'm going to show you guys that in a little while. So what you want to do is take a little bit to start with. And that's because you don't want it to be sticking all over the place or worse yet sticking to itself. You want to use it in little sections and smooth along the way as you go. So that's what I'm going to do, line it up with my first point of reference line and then you can use this ruler or a squeegee to wipe it and put it in place. Now the reason for the glass cleaner is that depending on the surface you have to make sure that you have accuracy you can actually spray some glass cleaner and what that does is it prevents the tacky layer from sticking and you can move it around. And then when you get it to the position that you want it to be, you can use a ruler or a squeegee to squeeze out all of the, um, the liquid and then you will be left with the contact paper in the position that you want it to be. Now for me, my countertops were not perfectly smooth, so it didn't work for me because what can happen is that the ruler could actually end up tearing my um, contact paper and that is something I definitely didn't want so I found that using my hands was good enough for my area so you want to do it in small sections as I said and remove any air bubbles along the way do not leave the air bubbles there raise up the contact paper if you have to to get rid of those air bubbles so for the second area I'm going to do it a little differently from the first for the first area I used one full roll and then I rolled it out placed it where it needed to be and then when I got to the end I used my um, exacto blade to cut it along the wall. For this second area what I'm going to do is actually measure it out to the size that it needs to be, make sure and be very precise with my measurements and then I'm going to cut it with the scissors and then I'm going to go in and place it. The reason I'm doing that is just because that is where my fridge is and it was a bit difficult to get um, in the space next to my fridge to make sure that it was you know done properly so I thought this method would be best for such a small and sensitive area so that works and then in addition to that I um, cut it a little big so that I can do the front face of my countertops as well 
So now I am moving on to my second countertops and I have to do this one differently just because these countertops are smaller, they have more twists and turns and then there's also the sink in the way. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring it where I need it to be and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to be doing these countertops in, um, in smaller sections with smaller pieces of contact paper that will then make a hole as opposed to the first set of countertops which I did um, with larger pieces of contact paper. So I am going in again and I'm taking my time with my placement and making sure to remove any and all air bubbles and this is just because you don't want it to raise up in the future air bubbles are just just means that it it hasn't stuck down to the surface properly so you want to be very careful when doing this so as you can see I'm taking my exacto blade now and cutting it around my uh, kitchen sink area just cutting it to size because I want a really neat finish I don't want it to look too fake and what you can actually do with those little cutoffs is that any uh, gaps that you may have you can cover it with those so I had a little gap at the top and I used the little cutoff to um, cover that in addition to it so for this part I actually made a bit of a mistake oh, oh boy so this is the part where I'm going to cover the, the um, front part of the countertop itself and also the front face right so I'm just measuring it and I'm going to line it up to then cut the contact paper itself and thankfully the contact paper has guidelines behind it so you can have a nice precise place to cut the mistake that I made was that I cut in the wrong place and I actually cut it smaller than it was intended to be so what ended up happening was that I wasn't able to cover the entire front face with one seamless piece of contact paper and unfortunately I realized this too late and I didn't have another big piece like this that I can just cover it back with. So for this piece I had to do a lot of patching um, to make up the space but don't worry guys it did not look bad I was still able to make it work um, with what I was doing. So I took my time and cut this out and it is at this point that I realized I cut it too small but I sold it on and I thought of a way to make it work so again I'm just going to remove the backing and then little by little place my contact paper where I want it to be all right so as you guys can see it's not going to cover the entire front face there I'm gonna have to patch that a little later but that's okay um, we are gonna make it work so it's time for me to just place the front part of it and I want to smooth that down just as we've been doing for all the other parts to make sure that we have a nice seamless finish and in terms of the seams guys it really wasn't a problem you really can't tell unless you stare very hard at it and I have not yet had any problems with it raising up or anything like that for the corner part there I'm just making a little snip so that the front face of it can lie down seamlessly. One eternity later. Okay, so I've done that. I've done the other side. I've done the corner as well. And it took my time to use my X-Acto blade to go around the counter because I wanted that to be really nice and seamless and done well so that you couldn't tell that that is exactly what it was. And this is all the pieces that I've added. And finally, I'm going to add little bits of cutoffs to create the front face of my countertops. So that was our marble contact paper DIY'd 
kitchen counters. I love, love, love how they came out. I'm so excited about it. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. So, I intend on doing some other things and I'll show you guys some of the other things that I've done. And I'm really happy with how, how every single thing came out. I went back and I bought four more rolls and right now I only have two remaining. So, I've been busy. I have been busy. If you watch my, um, vision board video you saw that I actually covered my vo my vision board in marble contact paper as well so as you can see I've been busy guys thank you so much for checking out this video and until our next time namaste babies